From the stinking bogs and mires of the realms emerges the armies of the cruel boy orcs. For these dark-hearted greenskins, battle is not solely a means of proving their ardness and honouring the bestial god Gorka Morka. It is also a way to humiliate the righteous and the pure, and the many cunning tricks habitually employed by the cruel boys are as spiteful as they are efficient. So, what better way to uh, support charity than to utilize some cruel boys? Uh, these guys are going to be part of the Nova Open Summer Charity Raffle, and I have had this plan stewing for a couple of months now, slowly getting the pieces together. Um, my two affiliates have been super generous in donating supplies. Uh, the models came from Herrick, Herrick Games and Hobbies, and the bases came from Elric's Hobbies. So a big thanks to both of them for helping me with, with this little endeavor. The idea is to paint up Roughly 2,000 points worth of Cruel Boys. There's a little bit extra in there to give you a little bit of choice if you're the uh, the lucky winner of the raffle. Um, and, you know, donate the full army to Nova to, to raffle off. The basis of the army is, is the Dominion box set, and that's kind of the core of the army. And then I, I throw in a, a couple of uh, extra of the bolt throwers to... Uh, spice things up a bit. I know that that artillery piece is really core to a lot of cool boy tactics, so that's why I went with that. Um, but despite having this plan cooking in my mind and knowing I wanted to really have that vibrant poppy red uh, on those shields, I love, I love those shields and those icons. Um, I still didn't really know what I was going to do with the rest of the army. And so this video I'm going to really just show you how I played around with a few ideas uh, to get what I think is going to look like a great army when it's all, all painted up and done. <laughs> So as always, I started with a Xenithal Prime white Liquitex titanium white ink over a black primer. Uh, and the first step I took here was to get the base coats down on all of the metallic areas. So this was the sword, the armor plates, parts of the banner, um, just to really make sure that those areas have, have got a, a metallic sheen to them and any overspray gets covered up uh, fairly early on. You don't really want non-metallic areas giving off a metallic sparkle with, with models, so I, um, I wanted to get that down early. I started with Vallejo Model Color Steel, which is my general go-to, and um, that is a really nice, rich, dark metal uh, that you can easily highlight up. Uh, it gives great coverage, it doesn't need thinning through an airbrush, and it still works great with a brush out of the pot, so it's, it's a really preferred uh, set of metal colors. The whole line is excellent uh, for me. This video is playing back at double speed, um, so you can see I'm really taking my time with this. I'm being pretty precise in where I'm shooting, and that remains true through a lot of this. I wanted to do something a little bit different with this army. Normally I will pretty roughly slap down airbrushing coats on a full army uh, and then add in the detail and the fine work at the, with the brush uh, towards the end. This time I wanted to take a little bit longer with the airbrush and um, really give it some, uh, some of the detail right, right from the airbrush stage. What you can see here is me now applying a bit of a, a zenithal highlight to the metal areas with Vallejo Model Color Silver. It's a very bright color, uh, works really well for that kind of highlight. After that, it was time to start pre-shading the red. Now, those of you that follow me on Instagram will know that this recipe for red 
is one that I used pretty extensively with the Lumineth that I did for Nova last year and some commission work on Lumineth that I've done since. Uh, the start of this is to reinforce the shadows with a green. Uh, this time I just used a uh, pretty bright green ink from FW, um, which just sprays really nicely out of the airbrush. Be careful not to overspray too much with the green because anywhere that the green goes, and any red over the top of it is going to be knocked completely to black. So if you're too uh, generous with the green, you're really going to end up with a very dark red. Um, and the idea of this is to actually give the red more vibrancy. Having that green really provide a high degree of shadow pretty quickly um, enriches the highlighted areas, but there still need to be those highlighted areas to see. Um, and you'll see that I actually do go back and kind of reinforce those brighter areas later on just to make sure that there's enough surface for that red to really shine. So here is me re-establishing highlights with the white. Uh, I'm putting the zenithal not just to knock back some of that green, but I'm also taking the advantage, taking the, this opportunity to uh, push the white on some of the other areas, particularly the face, which I wanted to brighten up a bit, um, just so that the paints that I apply later on have a little bit more contrast to, to sit over top of. Next up is the yellow, and again the yellow is there to enrich the red that's going to go over top of it. So this is focused very much on the banner. Uh, I want to keep the red to one fairly small area so that it's really vibrant when it uh, when it comes into onto the model. And when you're looking at the models from a distance, you see one singular point that's popping on the model. So. Having done that green, the yellow, well, the white, and then uh, blending, transitioning the two with the yellow in the midtones, uh, it's time to go over with a layer of red. For this, I'm using Vallejo Gaming Red, and as you can see, it gives a really nice, really vibrant color. Again, I focused this on the front of the banner. I uh, wanted to leave the back as raw metal. I figured these guys weren't going to worry about the uh, the back of what they're, they're uh, using as a standard. They just want to really intimidate their enemies. Um, I had a little bit of red left in the cup, so I added a drop of white uh, just to mix up a little bit of pink for the tongue. Um, I probably could have gone with a more saturated pink, added a bit more white and, and had it a little bit more vibrant. Uh, but it it does the job for me of just slightly differentiating it from the rest of the banner, which is all I really needed. With the banner now done, it was time to give the rest of the model some attention. And I started with a little bit of thinned burnt umber ink from FW uh, to give the clothes a base coat to, to go over. Using translucent inks like this means that I'm still getting the benefit of the zenithal in much the same way as you would if you were painting with contrast over a zenithal. Um, the inks are flat, so they don't exaggerate the shadows, they don't enhance the shadows in the way contrast would, uh, but they, they retain the, the contrast that's there already from the zenithal, and, and that's all I really needed for this. So I focused mostly on the clothes. I did do some intentional overspray onto the metals to give them a bit more of a worn look. Um, but that was all I really needed to, to do for, for the metals. Uh, I did use a hairdryer quickly. One of the downsides of inks is they 
will often dry glossy and that can make it quite hard to just be confident that they've dried. Anytime I'm airbrushing like this and switching through colors fairly quickly, I'll often just hair dry uh, in between just so that I'm not um, reactivating the paint underneath or pushing it around if it's still quite wet on the surface. With the burnt umper down, I wanted to change up some of the color areas, so I added a little bit of burnt sienna uh, and sprayed that on some of the areas of cloth just to help differentiate them a little bit here and there. I then went in with some extra white and brought out the highlight on the flesh once again uh, to really help with the base coating of the flesh. I also allowed this to overspray a little bit onto the the clothes knowing that I was going to be applying a contrast as a wash over the clothes later on. So this just helps bring out the, the degree of contrast again where the burnt umber or, or burnt sienna was a little bit heavy. Um, At this point I've started getting a little bit finickety with the uh, bits and areas that I'm, I'm airbrushing and <laughs> slowly drifting off camera so apologies for that. The last stage uh, was to get the flesh painted up and for that I used Plague Bearer Flesh from Citadel Contrast. When you airbrush a contrast paint it doesn't have the contrast properties, it acts just like a regular translucent ink. Um, but again, you know, as you've seen I've been working on ensuring that the contrast is there to begin with, with successive layers of highlights to, to focus in uh, the differential between that and the black base coats. So with that set up, it was just a case of spraying a quick layer of the uh, Plague Bearer Flesh on all the fleshy areas, trying to make sure I didn't miss anything, the feet, the legs, the arms, the head, the hands. Um, and with that, the airbrushing portion of uh, the model is really complete. So uh, it was time to move to brush painting and for this I used AK Interactive Faded White which is a slightly warm white. It Really it looks almost like a pure white uh, but it's it's got some slight warmth to it which I think works well with the colour palette that we're using here. Um, I was really just using this to help pick out some areas, particularly around the fabrics. I wanted the stitching to be brought out a little bit, the ropes that are around his neck to be brought out a little bit as distinct and, and different colours to the rest of the hide or the cloth, whatever it is that he's, he's dressed in. Uh, I did also use a little bit of the same faded white, thinned a little bit more to introduce the 
impression of texture around the edges of that hide of that cloth um, just to again kind of give it a bit more of a distressed look uh, so that's that's what I'm doing here and I did also very briefly use it to pick out the maggot on the tongue of the banner uh, because you know every maggot needs a little bit of special attention or at least that's what painting 3000 points of death guard taught me uh, When painting for armies, uh, you really do want to make sure that you're, you're pushing your contrast maybe a little bit too far. Um, the further away you are from a model, the more those colors tend to blend and flatten down. So you do want to exaggerate them a little bit to, to bring them up a bit further. Um, thinking I was done with the white, I suddenly realized that I needed to do the skull and, and the strings holding the decapitated heads, etc. Uh, so I quickly <laughs> rolled my brush back and did those and I picked out the teeth and the eyes whilst I was at it because uh, they needed a little bit more attention, so. I'd considered doing the eyes a different colour, maybe yellow or something like that, but um, ultimately I opted to just uh, stick with white just for that good high high contrast vibe. Obviously, having spent so much time airbrushing, you do want to be very careful that you're not uh, painting where you didn't mean to paint. Uh, so do do be careful when you're doing that. It's just like with contrast paints. You want to ensure that you are um, really kind of painting inside the lines uh, for this. And sometimes, you know, underpainting the areas is actually better than slightly overpainting them. Uh, if you underpaint, oftentimes if you've got your zenithal in place already, you've already got a black line between areas, uh, hopefully, uh, that will kind of give the impression that everything looks correct, even if you've actually just not painted part of the model. So with the uh, highlights, reinforced highlights in place, uh, it was time to kind of soften their transition with the rest of the model. And for that, I just used Skeleton Horde. Um, Skeleton Horde is, is a really useful color because it's a little bit stronger than most traditional washes, uh, but it's, n it's not so strong as to be a color of its own necessarily. It can be. Works great over white to give a kind of bone effect as you'll see on the skull, which is really pretty much untouched, uh, aside from further reinforcement of the highlights. Um, but for other colors, other areas where you're wanting a warm uh, shadow, but you're also wanting to filter the colors, bring them all together, it, it really works very, very well. So that was uh, kind of the use I put it to. And because I'd taken the time to pick out the ropes around his neck, etc., those continue to stand out even after a kind of almost a wash of the skeleton horde. Last thing I did was a little bit of black for the eyes and to pick out a few other details. Um, I actually used uh, black Templar contrast for this. I think with the other models I may just go with a pure black. Um, I'd been debating what to do with the Cruel Boy's eyes. Did I want them kind of glowing in a menacing manner? Um, 
compositionally, I think if I would if I'd gone that route, I'd have probably want them some kind of vibrant blue, uh, and that just didn't feel right with the with the kind of concept of orcs. Blue glowing eyes doesn't really work in my mind. Um, the other option would potentially have been like yellow eyes, but I kind of felt that that was a little overdone. Uh, so in the end, I just opted to blacken them out, really give them a kind of sinister vibe. Um, you know, almost channeling the Urukai in, in the Lord of the Rings movies, where they've got those very kind of odd eyes that just make them look that much more sinister. Last thing to do uh, is kind of work on the, the metallic pieces a little bit. Uh, I just used the Vallejo model colour silver again. Um, picked out the edge highlights with it and then used a sponge to stipple a little bit of silver onto various areas. Um, this, this stippling gives a really good chipped effect. It allowed me to kind of distress the uh, banner as well without really, you know, impacting the, the punch of it, but giving a little bit more visual interest if you're to um, take a closer look at the model. And with that, my first model for this brand new army uh, is basically complete. All in all, uh, this process took me probably about an hour. Um, I play, you know, this is playing at double speed and it looks like it's about you know, 20 minutes long, but I did cut out a lot of the um, paint changes in the, uh, in the airbrushing section, which added a bit of time. Uh, so, you know, maybe an hour to do this model start to finish. Uh, as I work on the units and get more used to this color scheme, it will probably go quite a bit faster. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this. If you're thinking about a Quill Boys army, uh, please feel free to, to adopt this color scheme or elements of it. Um, but if you are thinking about doing a Quill Boys army, please, please, please uh, keep an eye on the Nova Open Foundation's website and consider buying some raffle tickets to win this one. Uh, as I said, it's a full 2,000 point army. Uh, it's got a little bit of conversion work on a couple of the heroes that I've done. Uh, and I hope it will uh, raise some good money for charity. Um, putting the money towards Medicine Sans Frontier, who are obviously having to do a lot in the world at the moment. Uh, so that is hopefully a, a cause you can relate to and uh, are willing to donate to. Thanks as always for watching folks and I will see you in the next one. Later days.